Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here, and today we continue with the series of interviews with Ken Sprague, and in this video we explore Ken's life after separating from his wife and his new life in California as model and porn star Dakota for Cult Studios, and how this desperate change in his life would have massive implications in the development of Gold's Gym and the golden years of bodybuilding. Enjoy. Yeah, you mentioned um, you you basically were at one point had ten bucks when you went to um, to uh, L.A. I think it was. Is that correct? That's correct. I had, I wound up uh, in Los Angeles with ten dollars. I had driven my old MGA across country from Cincinnati, uh, and. The 10 bucks, I know, I remember $1.69 went for my first dinner in LA. This was in 1969. And I planned, well, I'll stay a couple of weeks because I, there was this outfit called Colt Studio that had seen my picture and offered me more money than I had at the time <laughs> yeah. for some photos. And uh, so that, gave me the hook to go to California okay. and the need was of course uh, actually I left Cincinnati with $65 most of which went to gas one of which since it was dead winter I spun out on a on an interstate and had to be towed out so that took $20 at that time oh boy <laughs> luckily gasoline only cost about 35 cents a gallon so <laughs> that helped but all those little things well you've mentioned cult so um would you say that the fact that it, i don't want to say you were desperate at the time financially but um, i would use that word i would okay. use that word. okay i don't i don't like saying things and, and assuming anything yeah. but if you're saying it then yeah. it would reflect again a lot of the decision you made um so you mentioned that the modeling career at Colt Studio began with with photos that um, yes. were taken of you. Yes, it is, it is some naivete of me at the time. I was a little naive. I had thought that the photos would be with a swimming suit on. You know, I saw you at uh, a contest, right? Well, I got there, and then they say, "Well." take your swimming suit off. And I'm thinking to myself, well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't think it was a big deal, candidly. Yeah. yeah. Um, what kind of work though? I mean, you, you also worked as the persona decoder, is that correct? Would you say that again? Um, did you work as the, uh, I guess, under the name as Dakota? Is that correct? Oh, 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 yes. I'm sorry. That that uh, Australian accident threw me a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, that was what the cult decided to name me for the pictures. Yeah, that's right. I'm not, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, now, was it um, also filmography that you did at all, or just the photography under Dakota? Uh, there were a couple of films, but um, let me be, but they were based on on the Dakota moniker. Mm -hmm. It's like branding. I'm sure they looked at it as branding. Well, we've got the photos. Let's do such and such, and let's let's uh, let the audience know what they're getting. So we'll brand them. Much like Gold's was branded, <laughs> but in a, <laughs> a bit different. <laughs> um, would you be comfortable in uh, explaining the nature of these films? Well, they were geared to the, uh, there's no getting around it, that they were geared to the gay community. Okay. And at that time, looking back at the socialization, there wasn't any uh you know what the term closeted means i suspect yes yes at that time you had to be closeted if, if you were uh, gay mm -hmm. and so there was a big market for photos and films mm -hmm. and that uh, and cult filled that market 
Yeah. So I, as an overview, that was the that was the uh, basis for the photos and the films. Mm -hmm. There was one uh, one night by uh, Colt. It was um, from the GGRC. The Guys and Girls Riding Club produced it, and it was no nudity, but uh, again uh, along that line. You know. mm -hmm. But the rest were Colt Studio films. Um, I've also read rumors like I mean it's clear to me that some of these decisions you've made of course were out of desperation I understand that mm -hmm. <laughs> out of naivety all these things that we do only partially only partially <laughs> partially okay well that's kind of where I'm going Go um, ahead. was it just to become financially secure or, or was it something else that also drove you was it also your ambition to to become something well, at that time for the, for the films and the uh, uh, photographs, it was purely for financial stability. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, <laughs> it's nothing, nothing I could do today <laughs> or would do today <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was for financial stability. I needed the money. I very soon had enough money to bring my ex-wife and the two kids out to California. I got them a house. Huh. Uh, so this was all based in some construct on family values, as bizarre mm -hmm. as that seems. Yeah, no, it's, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay. And yeah, it um, that was it. And so she was there. Let's see. My oldest son was born in 64 that would have been 1970 mm -hmm. that i brought him and his daughter two years younger julie out to california with their mother and put them in a house in uh i didn't think this went through but uh, the neighborhood didn't much care for them <laughs> oh okay <laughs> again oh boy. An all -white neighborhood, my neighborhood then later i moved them to uh a uh, unit in uh, Santa Monica, which was much more liberal. Yeah, so. of course. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for um, yeah being honest about all that and and talking about it because um, as I said, there's sure. a lot of rumors going around and and um, what, if one you, from, if you'd like me to respond to any of those rumors, I will too. Well, there is one I, right now. I mean, uh, I, I've read from author and novelist David Carter, for example. Oh. Yeah, he, uh, you probably know this one, that you also worked as a male hustler or in yeah. other terms, oh, a gigolo. Yes, David true? had, uh, no, David had some uh, interesting uh, ideas. <laughs> okay. uh, David Carter, uh, I'm trying to remember his real name, but when he arrived in California, this was before I, I uh, owned gold, so it was around 1970. We were down at the yeah. beach and this fellow came walking across the beach and spontaneously, a couple of, them, of us said, there's the missing link. He really walked like the missing link. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he took it later and it was quite bright. He really was quite bright, but a very strange, uh, voice and I, I uh, had a look <laughs> we were sure it was the missing link but he would later go on and put his ad in the uh, Los Angeles free press for hustling and so oh, he, wow. oh, so he spread that he spread that sort of allegation to everyone assuming okay. assuming I would assume too that if you're taking photos you must be doing a lot of other things. yeah it's fair enough but but I I, uh, I did read his book, yeah. And let's set me aside. But the other characters he mentioned, uh, he really took literary license <laughs> there. It was it was complete uh, bogus material. <laughs> Good. Um, thanks for clearing that up. Sure. Um, another question. Oh, David was later uh, killed and uh, killed himself incidentally. I don't know how this happens. I don't really believe it. But the police report was that he cut his own throat. <laughs> oh, boy. That's, uh... I know. 
Yeah. Oh, another little funny, funny thing aside. Do you tell me to stop? If you no, no, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but in his ad, he put a photo ad in um, in the LA Free Press, and what he he took an eyebrow pencil and drew in abdominals <laughs> to look better. Yeah, <laughs> and it's so obvious that they were drawn in, but evidently not to him. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Sorry, <laughs> no, it's just uh, great stories. Um, a question now on, on all of this stuff. Um, did it actually affect your relationship now with your new girlfriend? I'm assuming you you were go girlfriend and boyfriend at the time with your wife to be Marion, or did you not know her while you were doing all this modeling and stuff? I, I did not know her then. It had it had ceased shortly before I met her. Okay. And I met her in a chemistry class. I was going back to school then. I'm always going to school. Yeah. But uh, I was in a chemistry class to brush up on my chemistry. And this little girl came over to me and asked if she could be my lab partner. And again, as things do, one thing led to another. <laughs> <laughs> chemistry. And, <laughs> chemistry, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, she had remarkable character not a flaw in her character as opposed to me and uh i thought well god she sort of trapped me in a sense <laughs> and i say that with sweetness because she was a wonderful person but uh unfortunately it was she was with me during golds and um she was the real reason I sold golds because she died at 27 years old in 1978. Yep. And so that did take the heart out of me. I wouldn't admit that like people do, I wouldn't admit it was going to happen until it happened. Yeah. And then I felt a real crush, real downward spiral. But yeah. luckily, luckily, and um, despite that tragedy, I managed to meet Donna very soon afterwards, and uh, we've been together for 44 years. And in all cases, had uh, Marion not uh, died, we would we would still be together. It's that sense of commitment. Once yeah. I don't know where it's from, but it's it's there. That's great. But Donna and I are just as happy as can be. So out of a tragedy came a positive uh, benefit too. That's great. So that was Ken Sprague, and as he explained, he was young and ambitious, and eventually separated from his wife and left to California as a poor man to pursue his goals. His decision to join Colt Studios was due to several reasons, and as Ken Sprague explains, he was literally living on a shoestring, and the responsibility of supporting a family with two children weighed down on him heavily. The offer to join Colt Studios in California was too tempting and through a combination of naivety, desperation and young drive and ambition, he initially modeled and would later act in gay porn films. A lucrative decision to say in the least. The money allowed him to support himself and his family and gave Ken the financial security he was after. Ken also dispels rumors from author David Carter that he was a male gigolo, which he denies. And as we will learn from the next interview with Ken Sprague, the financial security that Ken achieved as Dakota in the gay and porn and film industry would serve to save Gold's Gym, which was about to be closed in 1972. Reflecting on this interview, I thought I would give my thoughts as I am sure that many of you want to hear them. As many of you have realized, I'm very traditional, I'm an old-fashioned man, very much into my family, believing that a family requires a strong man to lead. You wouldn't call me the kind of person, you know, that would join a pride parade during Pride Month, that's for sure, right? Um, when I initially decided to speak to Ken, I have to say that I was almost not going to touch on this particular topic because of my traditional values. Uh, but did so because I, I, I never like hiding the truth. I do not like judging people either and do believe that people have a right to do as they please 
as long as they don't shove their ideas or ideologies down my throat, especially, especially if I don't agree with them, be it conservative or liberal ideas. Having said that, I don't think I have ever been in a situation of absolute desperation, nor was I ever ambitious enough to go ahead and pursue such lucrative and taboo business. Hence, why at least for me, I do not like judging people in that regard. I do reflect, though, on the fact that had it not been for the circumstances that Ken went through, as well as having Ken Waller, then there would be no Gold's Gym today. It is also likely that Pumping Iron would not have been as successful, no matter how charismatic Arnold was and still is. And it is likely that our beloved Iron Game and bodybuilding would not have developed the way it has, with the obvious luxury of now having access to gyms in almost every location around the world. Just just think of how Gold's Gym pumping iron and the golden years of bodybuilding and fitness impacted the fitness industry today. It is amazing and important to note that no matter the method, it is people or it is because of people like Ken that we can enjoy the fitness industry that we do have today. So I do hope you have enjoyed this video interview with Ken Sprague as well as my reflection. And if you have, please give the video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so yet, leave me your comments. That's it for me. This is the Golden Era Bookworm saying bye for now. Head to www.goldenerabookworm.com for the biggest range of classic old school bodybuilding books as ebooks, e-magazines such as Iron Man and Reg Park Journal, high quality bodybuilding posters of the Golden Era stars, merchandise and classic gym wear featuring Steve Reeves, Marvin Eder, John Grimmick, Reg Park and many other Golden Era stars. For those wishing to build a classic physique, lose fat and build muscle, online training is also available. Collectibles such as rare autographed photos from the Golden Era stars are also available and to collaborate, please get in touch. As a natural bodybuilder, it is imperative to know your own testosterone levels as they are a reflection of the anabolic environment created by your diet and training. I would highly recommend using the male hormone test kit from Let's Get Checked and make sure you use my code GOLDEN30 for a 30% discount. Again, the advantage of checking yourself regularly is that you will know how well your body is anabolically primed to put on the much desired muscle you are working for. Not all of us have the time to go to a gym or the opportunity to have a coach to teach us one-on-one -on -one. But with the Future Fitness app, it's like having a personal trainer in your living room. From February 11th onwards, you can try the Future Fitness app for only $19 for the first month. Think of what you can accomplish during that first month. So go on and hit my link at tryfuture.co slash geb to get started. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Vince Deronda's approach to bodybuilding, his principles, and all these tips of wisdom that he has. But to be honest, these three books, I believe, which I call the Classic Physique Bundle, are the best books that Vince ever came out with. And they, of course, are the Wild Physique, the Master Series, and the Pro Series. Have a look at it this way. The Wild Physique, I believe, is like the ABCs of Vince Deronda's principles to bodybuilding. He teaches you the exercises and his principles. But how do you put them together? Well, the Master Series is a 14-month program of using all of these principles, all of the diets that Vince came out with, all of the exercises. And of course, the Pro Series was a book that he came out with later on, specially targeted for uh, getting into competition. It's just these, these three books, as I call it, the Classic Physique Bundle, uh, Vince's best work, and available, of course, at www.goldenerabookum.com.